All right, I'll just get my screen. Uh, and if you could camera off. Yep. All right, we all good? Okay. Um, so before we begin, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of all the lands on which we meet today. I'm presenting from Mianjin, otherwise also known as Brisbane, um, land of the Turrbal people. So um, today I'm, de I'm presenting my research proposal. Uh, it's entitled Developing a New Model of Delivery for Naturopathic Care, a Mixed Methods Study on Group Delivered Naturopathy for en Endometriosis. Um, and I've developed this in collaboration with my supervisory team, Professor John Wardle, Dr. Amy Steele, and Associate Professor Matthew Leach. Um, and I am a naturopath and a PhD candidate. And I guess um, this research was created through my own uh, clinical experiences and observations. In, in my clinical practice as a naturopath, I've been observing some of the barriers to accessing naturopathic care for patients and also some of the um, limitations to delivery of naturopathy as a naturopath and especially as someone who cares deeply about accessible healthcare and um, community health. So that's sort of led me to a little bit of trial and error in how I practice and experimenting with different ways how I can make my services more accessible and reach more of my community and through that process, I mean, it's still a working process, um, but it's made me become very aware of some of the challenges naturopaths face in that, um, in the broad picture of healthcare, I suppose. So, yeah, as a result, I, I created this idea um, to try and look at new models for delivering naturopathy to make it more address issues of access. So I'll just give you an overview of what I'm going to be talking to you about today. Um, I'll talk about the background of the research. So naturopathy, that's the intervention that the research will be implementing. Shared medical appointments, that's the model that the intervention is based on. And endometriosis is the condition we'll be looking at. So I'll also talk about the aims, relevance and research question and a literature review I've conducted on shared medical appointments and women's health conditions. And then I'll talk you through the proposed methods of the research. So what is naturopathy? It's a whole system of healthcare. It's underpinned by a deep history of traditional philosophies and practices. Um, there's seven core principles actually of naturopathy, but two of those philosophical underpinnings that really embody naturopathy are toll totem and toll causum, and they translate to treat the whole person and treat the cause. So naturopaths most frequently uh, prescribe lifestyle related treatments. So nutritional counseling, stress management strategies, um, sleep management, alongside herbal medicines and botanical medicines and nutritional medicines and those types of things. So um, we, naturopaths are medically trained practitioners, but we use an eclectic mix of natural treatments to, to try and meet our patients' needs. And in Australia, naturopathic use, it, naturopathy is highly utilised by women and they're frequently, frequently consulting naturopaths for female specific reproductive conditions and menstrual disorders, such as endometriosis, um, amongst other chronic conditions. And those types of lifestyle treatments that we're using are actually things that are really beneficial or even essential in chronic disease management, but um, can sometimes also be overlooked in conventional care due to different training and system constructs and as well as time constraints. So that's where naturopathy comes into the picture, I guess, of chronic disease management. Um, so there, as I've alluded to in my little introduction, there are some barriers to access of naturopathy. So it's normally delivered in a long one-on-one -on -one consultation model. That's um, one, an individual patient with an individual practitioner. And this proffers the benefits of patient-centred care and individualised medicine, which naturopaths are really good at, but it's also limiting in time and cost. So 
naturopathy is excluded from Medicare, which means that all of the consultation fees, the prescriptions, diagnostics are out of pocket costs borne by the patient. Um, and this does result in financial and social barriers to community access. Now, shared medical appointments are an emerging model in conventional medicine and also in uh, integrative medicine. And it's a patient-centred model, also known as group medical visits or integrative group medicine visits sometimes. And it's where a, one, a group of patients will consult with one or more health professionals simultaneously. So this will include everything you'd expect in a one-on-one -on -one consultation, vital signs, medica medical consultation, medication reviews, as well as patient education, peer support, and um, sometimes other integrative medicine disciplines. So by combining these three key components, clinical care, patient education, and peer support, shared medical appointments, um, have the potential to improve patient outcomes. And I would just say that that peer support component is a really, uh, is the unique and essential component in that model because it's patients are interacting with one another, they're connecting um, and developing a sense of being less alone in their illness um, and developing a sense of connection, which fosters patient empowerment and enhances self-efficacy. So it's, that sense of connection um, is actually quite powerful. And I guess, um, you know, healing circles, for example, are not a new idea that's been happening for thousands of years in traditional medicine systems. So it makes sense to bring that, that back into healthcare, that sense of connection. And I won't go into it off on a tangent now, but the, the health burden of loneliness is actually quite significant. So this bringing connection back into healthcare is something I feel is quite important. And it's a, and it's a integral part of this model. So, and that's part of why there've been, um, there's a high level of patient satisfaction reported with this model. It's also been demonstrated to be cost effective and time efficient and effective for chronic disease management. So there are lots of benefits that we know with the model, but we don't know the suitability um, or how well it could be adapted to the setting of naturopathic consultations because that hasn't been well explored. <clears throat> now endometriosis is a chronic, common, um, enigmatic condition that is not well understood, but it's said to involve a complex interplay of immune, inflammatory, genetic and hormonal factors. And it affects up to 700,000 Australian women, probably more. And um, the symptom picture is wide ranging and quite debilitating. It can include severe pain, pelvic, chronic pelvic pain, heavy menstrual bleeds, in some cases infertility. Um, and it does have significant social and psychological impacts and quite a significant impact on the quality of life of women who have endometriosis. It affects everything from work to social life <clears throat> to relationships. So that's quite significant. And at the moment, conventional medical treatment is not meeting the healthcare needs of women with endometriosis. And that's been acknowledged um, with the release of the National Action Plan for Endometriosis in 2018, which was released by the Australian Government Department of Health, highlighting the need for more awareness, more education, more um, treatments. So with all that background information in mind, I conducted a critical literature review to determine what is what evidence is out there for group visits with women's health conditions. So the review aimed to answer the question, is care for women with female reproductive conditions being delivered via a group or shared medical appointment model? So we searched six databases and two clinical trials registries, and we came up with five articles that, in, that fit our inclusion criteria. So as you can see, the sample sizes are quite small in those articles, um, but we had two on breast cancer, Two, uh, one on chronic pelvic pain, one on polycystic ovary syndrome, and one looking at various different types of gynecological cancers. And all of those five studies were pilot and or feasibility studies. 
So they were uncontrolled um, quasi-experimental studies. So being pilot studies, um, there wasn't a lot of reporting on clinical outcomes. So the conclusions we could draw about efficacy were rather limited. However, we did find that in all of those studies, there was a high level of patient and provider satisfaction with the group model. It was patients' needs were met or exceeded. So shared medical appointments appear to be well accepted and feasible um, for, for women's health conditions. I would note that, that all of those studies were conducted in the USA, which has a rather unique and very different healthcare system to Australia and probably most other countries in the world. So <clears throat> the system actually facilitates the billing of group medical visits, whereas ours doesn't, and I'm not sure about others. So transferring those, it's hard to say whether or not those results would be transferred to other settings. Regardless, um, there was a high level of patient and provider satisfaction. So let me just wrap all that back together in a nutshell. Um, so we have the evidence for benefits of group interventions and the feasibility of women's health and uh, feasibility of the model with women's health conditions. However, there is a gap in the evidence for the feasibility of naturopathy to be delivered by this group model. But we do have evidence for naturopathic treatments of women's health conditions. And there is an unmet healthcare need of women with endometriosis. So in from all of that, we see that endometriosis offers an ideal case for examining um, the suitability of group delivered naturopathic care to address issues of access and integration with a view to meeting the unmet healthcare need of, of women with endometriosis. So this research has three main aims, um, to examine the experiences, priorities and perceptions of women with endometriosis, to determine their needs and expectations of care and their self-management practices. So that would be a co-design model with the participants. Um, so that leads to the next aim to co-design a shared medical appointment model for delivering naturopathic care to women with endometriosis, and then to examine the feasibility of the model with naturopathic consultations and interventions in a primary care setting. So achieving these aims would answer the question, are group naturopathic consultations a feasible way to meet unmet healthcare needs in women with endometriosis? So it's a mixed methods project. It takes a pragmatic approach um, using qualitative and quantitative methods to um, develop inclusive and complementary research methods to, to reach a more comprehensive answer of the research question. So this takes an exploratory sequential design, including three phases. So a co-design phase using focus groups. Phase two is a, the pilot feasibility trial. And phase three is um, the intervention evaluation of that trial, examining patient and practitioner experiences. So just in a little more detail, so the phase one is the qualitative phase, um, and this is co-design where we collaborate with end users. So in this case, it, that is women with endometriosis and naturopaths who treat women with endometriosis. Um, and in consultation with them, we design and develop a program, um, including all of the outcome measures, the methods of analysis for the trial. And then we, we then go into the implementation phase, which is phase two, primarily quantitative. Um, <clears throat> and we'll be, it's basically the implementation of the naturopathic intervention. And then phase three complements phase two with an evaluation of that trial from patient and practitioner perspectives. And that's a mixed methods phase. So we are using purposive sampling for phase one and two. And we're looking at 10 to 20 participants um, for the focus groups for the co-design. And we'll be targeting um, key endometriosis support and advocacy groups and professional associations for those um, participants. And then phase two, we'll use the same strategy, but recruit new participants so as not to introduce selection bias. And then phase three of obviously includes the same participants who took part in the trial. So 
the outcomes we're looking at uh, of phase one is the outcome is to co-design a shared medical appointment model for naturopathic consultations for endometriosis. Phase two, uh, we're looking at feasibility. So that includes things like compliance, demand, implementation, um, adaptation, like how could this model be implemented in other chronic conditions outside of endometriosis, for example. And then secondary outcomes, which we will be, that's the clinical outcomes. So they will be determined in consultation with patients in phase one. And phase three, obviously, is a questionnaire on patient and practitioner experiences. So analysing this as it's mixed methods, we will be using qualitative and quantitative um, softwares, NVivo and SPSS. Um, phase one is the qualitative and then we'll be looking at descriptive statistics um, to dis uh, describe measures of central tendency and means and frequencies and a little bit of both in phase three. So that'll be quantitative and qualitative. And the timeline for this project, those phase one and two and completion of the write-up of my thesis will carry me through the next two years. And I'm, I'll be aiming for a thesis submission in early 2023. So in conclusion, there are a few acknowledgements I would make. I am the grateful recipient of, a, of an Australian Government Research Training Scholarship. Um, and I'd also acknowledge the National Centre for Naturopathic Medicine at SCU who provide a research budget to PhD students to cover research costs, which is very supportive. Um, of course, my amazing supervisory team who uh, none of this is possible without. They offer me ongoing support and mentorship um, in a kind of unconditional way. And I would also acknowledge uh, that this research actually began at the University of Technology, Sydney, which is where I was awarded my scholarship. And I, in the last few months, I made the decision to transfer over and join um, NCNM and be part of the National Centre for Naturopathic Medicine. Um, so I just acknowledge UTS for the opportunity um, and support they provided to me. And that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for listening. I'm happy to, if we have time, answer any questions. Um, let's take it back to the beginning, I suppose. Yeah, well, well, thanks, Sophia. And that was well timed. <laughs> <laughs> you were bang on the mark. Yes, we do have time for questions. So, um, um, do we have any questions for Sophia from the audience? Well, well, I, I had one. I might kick off okay. some there, if that's all yep. right. Um, <clears throat> so I was interested in this um, group appointments model. <clears throat> and, and so I'm assuming that what do you have the one practitioner with um, multiple clients, maybe two or three or something like that. Is that right? Um, so it will be one or more practitioners. In my case, it'll probably be one practitioner, but we'll also have a group facilitator. So the practitioner doesn't actually have to worry too much about group dynamics and that sort of thing. They're more worried about consulting with each patient. Yes. Um, and we're aiming, there's probably, there'll probably be six to eight patients in each group. So I, I was wondering, I mean, um, um, maintaining the quality of the, the individual care to the individual patient, could, could that be um, 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 challenging for the practitioner? And, and I'm wondering, does that mean that um, at least initially, what, what, how, does that, how does that work with um, initial assessment and treatment planning and all that sort of stuff? Would, would you do that initially on a one-to-one -one basis just so you can give them your full attention and then bring them into the, the group treatment process? Is that how it works or have I got it wrong? Or are there yeah. issues with that? Yeah, that's a great and frequently asked question. Um, so there's a number of ways you can do it. Um, you can, in some cases, in group medical appointments, they even take, you can incorporate a private component if necessary. Um, but ideally, so you have the group facilitators and or allied health professionals or whoever you're going to include in the group is trained in group facilitation, right? So the practitioner is, can really focus on each individual patient. Um, 
and ideally you're consulting in these appointments with patients who have similar uh, conditions so that makes it a little bit easier uh, whether or not we have to incorporate a private component at this stage we don't know because the, the design is actually the the trial and the intervention is actually being designed in the co-design with patients and practitioners yeah, yeah. so probably what happens is the practitioners has a consultation as you might call it with each individual patient in the group yep. and that, during that time other patients can be engaging or, or we have a, another professional doing education um, or you can do it another way it depends on patient needs of the group as well yeah yeah so it's going to be a little bit of trial and error but the the main key point is having the group facilitator to to try and free up the, the practitioner to so that they can address the needs of each patient. That sounds like a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I like the methodological issue too. I, I like the fact that you, you, you've got the co-design happening separate with one group and applying that differently, applying that to a different group. Yeah. So it's, it's, they're, they're not being affected. You know, there's, it's going to take out a lot of the stuff that could muck or compromise the integrity of the study, I think. So I take my hat off to you for that one. Yeah, thank you. I I have, do, was yeah. that, was that, did, did that come from your reading or your supervisor? That came from my reading, actually, because I had intended, I thought, oh, it'll be easy because we'll be able to just use the patients that we recruit for the focus groups. Yeah. But then in my reading, I realised that's not a good idea. But, so, yeah, we'll know. We'll be recruiting new patients. No. Um, Otherwise, they're coming in with their preconceived ideas about the inter intervention anyway. So, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> So um, um, I suppose, um, how, how has COVID affected um, your ability as a practitioner to engage just as a pr practitioner and how is it likely to affect your ability to recruit participants in the study? Yeah, so we'll be monitoring the situation closely. Um, it, in a worst case scenario, we could have to run the groups online which I very much hope doesn't happen. Um, but at the moment, for the sake of my ethics application, I've developed a COVID safe plan, which just abides by social distancing requirements and hygiene and all of that. So yeah. I'm hoping we'll be able to do it. And the groups won't, are not that big. Like there's, an, there's a maximum of 10 people in each room and I expect that they might be a bit smaller than that. So Yeah, right. Yeah. Also like, Eight, eight, eight people, as well as the two, well, the practitioner and the... the um, there could be eight people, yeah. yeah wow. Depends how recruitment goes. I, I thought you were talking about little groups like three or four. <laughs> no, well, typically that's how many patients go in a shared medical appointment. So right, okay. it'll be, you know, like, I'm not saying this is going to work. It'll, that'll be part of our feasibility, yeah. you know, the assessment to see how it actually goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so... Oh, I think that's fantastic. I, I wish you all the best with it. Thank you. I'm excited about it because it's, you know, something I've been thinking about and look reading about for a few years since I've started yeah. practicing as a naturopath. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And did, did you have any private exper experience with research design and all that sort of stuff? I mean, or have you picked all that up from your, your reading and preparation? No, well, I did an honours degree. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah, I did have a little bit of, I developed a research project in that as well. So had a little bit of experience. That's good. Oh, and, that's um, good. Yeah, I'm well supported. <laughs> Your supervisors are good? Very good, <laughs> yeah. That's good to hear. Yeah. So have we got any, any, any more questions from the audience at all? We've still got a couple of minutes to go. Or do we want, maybe want to take a, a five minute breather? I have a question. Yeah. Dennis, yeah, if you want to turn on your camera, Dennis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Craig, um, um, Sophia, I'm just wondering, 
is a lot of the purpose of the group consultation to teach people about the situation and the lifestyle approach? Um, well, done for uh, them? yes, De delivering via a group model enables you to be able to do that. I mean, the, the reason why group appointments would have been developed for um, conventional medicine is because it gives them more opportunity to, to do a bit of education um, without, you know, within time constraints and things like that. So that's one, definitely one component of it. Yeah. But, but it's not just an education group at the same time. It's not just a workshop, you know, it's, it's a consultation and there, there's, there will be an individualized treatment plan for every patient. I'm just trying to get my head around the initial consultation um, process as a group. Yeah, that's, I, I was a chiropractor and uh, chiropractic is um, intensely personal yeah. uh, initial activity. And I'm projecting, I guess, from what you're saying to, to my practice and how that would take place in my practice. But mm, yeah. I don't think it's a different situation. Oh, no, it's a valid question. Um, and I still have to undergo training in sh delivering shared medical appointments too. So um, I'm still exploring with how I'm actually going to approach that. Um, and so I, at this stage, I can't tell you whether there will be a private consultation to get that initial health, health history or whether yeah. it will happen within the group. Because there's all kinds of privacy yeah. Oh, there'll be a, there'll be a privacy agreement that'll be very clear and um, yeah. Well, yeah. And, you know, if you have say, if you had three women, for example, you know, if you have a dominant one who have a half hour appointment, one talks for twenty five minutes. I, I'm not trying to make problems. I'm just trying to get my head around. Oh, that's the, yeah. You're right. But there's all sorts of things that need to be considered. Yeah. And and uh, I have classrooms like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah well, it, it's it's human beings. <laughs> That's true. So group facilitation is going to be really important. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you bet. Do, do, do you have someone working with you already who's likely to be the group facilitator? Um, well, it's likely that I'll be the group facilitator and I'll have another practitioner. All so right. I okay. won't be the practitioner. Yeah, but I'm right. the facilitator. Uh, Can I that's... ask another question if we have time? Yeah. We've do, got you, time. do you foresee a situation where you might have a naturopath and a medical practitioner, allopathic medical practitioner, leading a group consultation. And I think I know what you're going to say, you know, the differences in the, 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 the mindsets, the differences in the worldviews, um, but you wouldn't put those two people in the same room together who were going to clash or have different worldviews, would you? I would, yeah. Uh, tell I, me about it. <laughs> I'm just interested. I, it's not it. within the scope of my study, but ideally a group consultation gives you the capacity to combine professions. Um, yep. and, meet, and meet, it, you can then achieve multidisciplinary care um, for patients there and then in one consultation. So that's, that's something that, yeah, I do foresee and I would love to in the future um, look at. But in this, because and with endometriosis and most chronic conditions, there's no one type of practitioner that can really solve all the problems of someone with a chronic disease. You need multiple different types of care. Mm -hmm. And usually, in my opinion, anyway, that does involve conventional medical care alongside with whatever, whichever, whichever other, other relevant um, integrative or yeah. health professions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we might have time for one quick more question. If we've got any coming from the audience. I've got one. Yeah, thanks Victoria. Yeah. Um, have you had trouble selecting um, the women for your interviews and stuff like that? I haven't started recruitment yet. This, so this is just my research proposal, but I intend on targeting women through Endometriosis Australia um, and maybe another key uh, endoactive or there's, there's some big 
advocacy groups out there for women with endometriosis and endometriosis Australia is really active in research and um, very uh, forthcoming with supporting researchers so probably I'll be they'll be supporting me with recruitment right yeah well, okay. Well, look, thanks very much for that, Sophia. I'm sure thanks. everyone here was really um, found this all very interesting and we, we wish you all the best on your new adventure into postgrad research. It sounds like a really, really worthy project. Too. Thank so, you. Um, I think um, if everyone, <laughs> just make sure everyone's applauding. Um, if you can find the, 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 the um, reactions button, there's a reactions button down there and you can go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thanks everyone. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, um, thanks again, Sophia. So look, if, if everyone could, if everyone, but Dennis could please, um, just, um, camera and mic off. Um, and, um, like to introduce 